What's up guys, Giovanni Frank here with Lionsgate Realty and it is the beginning of May so you know what that means. It's time for a Houston housing market update and as always we're going to be covering the month's worth of inventory in our market along with what that means for you as a buyer or a seller. When it comes to the real estate news we're going to be covering the $25,000 grant for first time home buyers along with the $15,000 tax credit for first time home buyers and what that means. Does every first time home buyer qualify for both of these programs or is it just some? We're gonna cover that as well. And as always, I have some type of Houston news but it seems like the only news that there is for Houston right now is the fact that 50 Cent is moving here. And I'm pretty sure you guys have seen all the memes on Instagram and Facebook. I mean, I even made one myself. So we're not gonna cover that today since you pretty much already know about that. Before we get into it, don't forget to drop a like and a subscribe. All right, drop the intro. Starting with the housing market, let's look at the numbers for Houston. Month's worth of inventory, we're at 1.8 months worth of inventory. For those of you who are new, month's worth of inventory pretty much means that if for some reason people stop putting their home for sale on the market as of today, we would only have 1.8 months worth of inventory, meaning we would only have enough homes for about a little under two months. Now, moving to the numbers this time last year, numbers sold were 26,977 homes. The average price this time last year in Houston was $383,089. Moving to the current data, we're looking at numbers active right now, homes on the market, 4,066 homes on the market. Average price is $736,431. Keep in mind guys, these numbers are for Houston as a whole. If you want numbers down to your neighborhood, to your block, or even for your home just in general, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to give you those numbers. That way you know what your suburb is worth or what your home is worth. For example, let's look at Baytown as a whole. For the Baytown area, month's worth of inventory, we have 1.2 months. Numbers sold this time last year was 1,392 homes. The average price was 207,000 with $23. Numbers active as of today, there's 143 homes on the market <laughs> and the average price is $291,084. If that doesn't convince you to put your home on the market, I don't think anything else will. Now let's look at what do these numbers mean for you as a seller or a buyer? Let me address the sellers first because you guys are getting a little bit too cocky for my taste. So we're gonna have to put you in your place real quick, right? So for my sellers, look guys, I understand that the market is so hot and right now you have all the cards in your hand. You thinking that you can put your $250,000 house on the market from the beginning for $400,000. Look guys, whatever agent that you hire, whether it's me or not, sit down and make an actual game plan to put your home on the market accordingly for the price that the market currently says it is worth. And not just putting it for the price like that, create some type of competition. List it maybe 10% under market value, 5% under market value. That way you get a lot of people that comes in and they're all gonna be looking at it and they're gonna be like, dang man, this home is actually cheaper than the one down the street. Let's make offers here. And not just make offers here, but I see that there's five other people looking at it right now. Let's make a higher offer. You'll end up getting more money like that. You still have to strategize even though that the market is in your favor at the moment. And now my buyers. <sighs> I know guys, it's difficult for you out there right now. We're pretty much fighting for scraps. So this is what I recommend. Hire an agent whose company has a stronghold in the community of where you wanna buy, simply because if that company has a stronghold there, more than likely their other agents are doing a lot of business there. This can be super beneficial to you because now you can view homes that aren't even on the market at the moment and you might have the first shot at them. So. Hire an agent who has a stronghold or whose broker has a stronghold in the area that you wanna buy. Now the real estate news that all of you guys are probably waiting for, the $25,000 grant and the $15,000 tax credit for first time buyers. Let's look at the $25,000 grant. What does that actually mean? So the $25,000 grant, you actually get it on closing day and this is to cover your expenses. So you're gonna get that $25,000 grant whenever you close to cover your down payment and expenses. With it being a grant and not a loan, it does not accumulate any type of interest and you don't have to pay it back if 
you don't sell your house within those five years. If you sell your house within the first year, you have to pay it completely back, the full amount. After the first year, it drops 20% for every year. So you have to pay 20% less every year until you get to your fifth year where you don't have to pay it back at all if you sell. And who qualifies for it? Do you qualify for it? Maybe not. Let's look at the qualification. So not only do you have to be a first time home buyer, meaning that you could not have owned a home in the past three years, but you have to be a first generation home buyer, meaning that your parents cannot have owned a home within the last three years. Now, or in general, right? Theirs is not the three year mark that they have to hit, just in general. Now, if they did lose their home due to deed in lieu of foreclosure, foreclosure or a short sale, now you do qualify for it, but they have to lose their home for those reasons. You also can make over 120% of the medium income in your area. Now, if your area is a really more expensive area, maybe like New York or California, I think they bump it up to 180%. There's also a class or a course that you'll have to take in order to receive this grant. And yes, you will qualify if you did live in foster care. That's different from being adopted. So if you were in foster care, you do qualify for this. The $15,000 tax credit is less restrictive. The qualifications are as follows. You can't own a home for the last three years, so you have to be a legit first time home buyer, right? Along with your income, it can be over 160% of the medium in your area. It is a one time tax credit that's worth up to 10% of the home's value that you purchase, and it has to be claimed in the year that you bought the home. So if you bought the home, let's say in 2021, you have to wait until you do your taxes in 2022 for 2021 to receive that tax credit. The good thing about this $15,000 tax credit, well, at least the way that the bill is worded at the moment is that if you owe the IRS $5,000 in taxes, they will give you the $10,000, right? So they'll give you the difference from the 15 of what they're giving you on that tax credit. So it's not a deductible, it is a credit. They're gonna give you the difference, at least the way it is worded at the moment. This will really benefit all of my entrepreneurs out there or people who are self-employed whenever it comes to tax season next year. So go ahead and reach out to your boy. Let's get you that home so we can get you that tax credit. I almost forgot to mention as of today when I'm recording this, these two bills have not passed. Go ahead and check out the comment section down below as soon as they do pass or if they get declined, I'll make sure to put that as my top comment. Also, let me know in the comment section down below if you're thinking about buying a house this year. All right, guys, that is our market update for May. If you ever have any questions regarding real estate, you know you can always reach out to me. I am here to help. Giovanni Frank here with Lionsgate Realty. Until next time.